The St. Lawrence Seaway and Power Development Project is an engineering marvel, and its story has captivated audiences since its opening over 50 years ago. Each year, about 5,000 tourists and locals would enjoy the vista, check out the exhibits, and view the documentary Dream to Reality at the Visitor Information Center atop the R.H. Saunders Dam. While the center closed in 1992, visitor interest remained, and when the facility hosted an open house for its 50th anniversary in 2008, public support was overwhelming. Discussions with stakeholders into the feasibility of reopening the center eventually led to OPG's approval of plans for a modern, off-site visitor center that would be designed with the most advanced environmental and engineering features. It's not very often where uh, architects get this kind of building to design. Uh, the challenges uh, were significant, uh, but the, uh, the adventure was very high as well. The most basic uh, ambition was to replace the visitor centre at the Saunders Generating Station. It was no longer accessible. It was on the sixth floor and uh, after 9-11 the whole facility was deemed to be uh, a critical piece of infrastructure shared between Canada and the United States and so accessibility was limited for safety and, and other reasons. And there was a, a dream to build a new visitor centre that was accessible. So the site adjacent to the building uh, was rather challenging. There was the canal and the river and uh, topography and uh, existing landscape and all of that. And on top of that, the ambition that this building would be lead. So what was uh, the most important event was to excite people to come to this site and work with the site itself so that the building would naturally sit in the environment, be welcoming and, and be attractive, all the while accomplishing the tasks of functioning and delivering the information of what the visitor center wanted to do. The groundbreaking of the construction phase started in early 2009. Uh, and, and which lasted uh, close to 18 months. And in uh, the summer of 2010, we officially opened uh, the building to the public. With opening this visitor center, it gives uh, much more visibility to Ontario Power Generation. Uh, we know the uh, facility is here to generate, but it's uh, to be told. And here we're going to be able to tell it. And I give absolute credit to all those who've worked so hard to bring the center on. The building is a, a very interesting uh, architecturally as well as for the experience of the visitor. Once you arrive at the visitor center reception, it's sort of a journey that takes you along through history, uh, exhibits of, uh, that are presented by different stakeholders, the Mohawks of Akwesasne, the Lost Villages, uh, environmental programs that are uh, about the river, its flora and fauna. It slowly ramps and it brings you along the history of the construction of the seaway, the construction of the power dam and many hands-on exhibits that talk about the performance of the generation of hydroelectricity and other power generation. Experiencing the building continues and it, it culminates at the river room. And that room has a wonderful 3D view of the river, the St. Lawrence River, and the Saunders Power Generation Dam. The building is uh, a very interesting building because of its construction and materials and the appearance of it. But another interesting aspect of the building is in fact its environmental and energy efficiency systems. The LEED uh, rating system is based on six uh, groupings of credit and the groupings include sustainable sites, water efficiency, energy and atmosphere, materials and resources, indoor environmental quality and innovation and design. The site selection is important uh, because it was virtually a, uh, a brownfield site, a reuse of an existing construction site its waste material uh, was dredged from the St. Lawrence Seaway during that 
period and it was a staging ground for construction. It is also a beautiful site where it is uh, nestled between the historic Cornwall Canal and the St. Lawrence River and we integrated an interesting design which married uh, effective uh, use of the driveways, uh, existing flora and fauna. We introduced into the site alternate transport, uh, which was a valuable credit for bicycle storage and change rooms, alternative fuel, a charging station for electric vehicles. Otherwise, the site was managed in that uh, the building and its landscaping did not require irrigation of the plants. Uh, stormwater management was controlled effectively. The site was controlled so that it didn't increase a heat island effect and light pollution was also mitigated. There are a whole number of uh, electrical and uh, mechanical systems. Uh, first and uh, foremost is that the building is heated by geothermal lines. The glycol comes back through the lines and it goes into heat pumps and the heat pumps are essentially compressors that provides both heat and cooling and the air is blown into the building and you have a wonderful tempered indoor air quality. As well in the building uh, there's a very interesting collection of water from the roof. This is rainwater and it's collected in the cistern and it's recycled and used to flush toilets and urinals. The water then is is uh, expelled uh, outside and in this building we don't use a municipal uh, sewer system we use a tile bed on site it's filtered and eventually it goes into the ground source and uh, and uh, dissipates and evaporates most of it evaporates the st lawrence power development visitor center is a great accomplishment in its uh, achievement of lead gold it's a wonderful achievement for an architect it's a wonderful achievement for the engineers and all of the people involved. Ultimately, I think the greatest achievement is for the community of Cornwall and all of the users, uh, both now and for many years in the future.